I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Claudio Mina, the CEO and co founder of Seedon. Claudio, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time today. Thank you for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure to be here. Likewise, excited to dive into Seedon, uh, alternative methods of crowdfunding, building a better crowdfunding platform. I uh, feel like there's a lot of issues that we can discuss in the way mm -hmm. crowdfunding is happening right now. Um, and interested to hear how you're integrating blockchain, cryptocurrencies, and just more community into Seedon. So let's start off the conversation uh, with just a high level of what you and your team have built at Seedon and, and how you would explain it, and then we'll dive into everything. Sure, sounds great. All right, so our main focus for now is actually trying to, uh, I mean, not trying, but actually building the crowdfunding 3.0, uh, which is going to be based on the blockchain. Uh, we're going to have the V1 uh, version of the platform in August. Uh, so basically, from the development perspective, we're, we're pretty, pretty solid. Uh, we are on the right track. At the moment, we're actually waiting for the licensing. Uh, we have applied as a funding portal in the US. So we're going to wait for that as well to get, uh, to get through. It actually takes a bit more time than was expected in, in the beginning because being in regard to the crypto and the US regulations are always changing. So we did have a few, a few bloggers on that side, but I think we're going to we're going to be able to actually meet our milestones, so I don't think there's something to worry about there. We're also in the middle of getting licenses as, as a crypto exchange in Lithuania, so that is going to actually offer us the possibility to offer um, our users the possibility to buy crypto with fiat money, so with a debit card, and that is going to be maybe approved in about two or three weeks, something like this, because we already uh, put in the paperwork, so we're just waiting for uh, for the licensing to get through. Uh, this is this is for the uh, uh, for the administrative perspective uh, from the development side we actually have released a solution on the 25th of april and that is a, a wallet solution we're also offering staking through it and also vesting for our investors uh, what we actually did is to uh, uh, to come with an additional solution for um, for our community besides the platform because we have realized that we can actually reuse those components for the main platform and actually offer those as a software as a service for other projects uh, we did have as the as first version right now, uh, the staking and the vesting for our community. And also we're going to have it more stable and uh, with uh, more functionalities such as uh, the exchange uh, to, buy, uh, to buy crypto with fiat and also a KYC module for this because this is going to be required. We're going to be involving the payment with the, with the uh, debit card. We're also going to be offering the solution to other projects. Uh, so we actually want to have uh, multiple coins and projects coming to our platform actually uh, provide the possibility for staking and for vesting as well. Uh, for vesting, they're going to have two options. So they're either going to have their investors join on our solution and then create an account and have the wallets distributed into the Cedo Finance wallet, or they can actually have an external wallet so we can actually make a transfer to MetaMask or Trust Wallet or any other wallet provider for, uh, for Binance Marching. So yeah, this is what we're looking for now. Uh, also, as an additional point, we're actually going to introduce in the next uh, release for the version uh, so basically the focus is to try to build something more than just a wallet. So we want to have uh, a source of information for, for our users in the, the crypto industry. So we're going to have um, uh, events from the crypto industry listed on, on our platform, similar to what CoinMarketCal is doing. Mm. We're also going to have uh, news, which is going to be aggregated from certain um, uh, big names from the industry, such as, such as uh, Cointelegraph, uh, the Block Crypto, uh, Crypto, uh, Daily Coin, and, and so on. So they're also going to have uh, all of these news in the same place, which is going to be a good thing because you're not going to have to go to different sources to be able to, to keep up with the news, but you can actually scroll it into the Sino Finance app and just be able to, uh, to stay up to date with the latest. Hmm. Great intro, Claudio, and thanks for covering all that. I would love to dive into uh, the regulatory aspect, as you mentioned there, as well as the wallet, crypto exchange, uh, cryptocurrency aspect. Uh, but first, mm -hmm. I'd like to know a little bit more on uh, the operations of the platform from an end user perspective. You know, when we see mm -hmm. some of these major crowdfunding platforms, um, there there's different uh, there's different ways that people are looking to use them. Right? Some people are yeah. developing a product and looking to raise money crowdfunding through it. Some people are also using it for donation or emergency and natural disaster relief. Uh, efforts as well. Um, are you focused specifically on the cryptocurrency side, uh, raising capital, or is this a, an, an all-purpose crowdfunding platform? 
So basically, at first, it all started as a uh, crowdfunding platform, which is going to be focusing on equity and donation-based crowdfunding campaigns. Uh, but then eventually, Sidon Finance came up, which is going to slowly morph into a, actually develop into a launchpad. And those are going to be different, two different solutions. So what is for crypto is going to be in Sidon Finance. What is going to be for uh, uh, conventional crowdfunding is going to be for Sidon uh, Venture, the platform. Um, what we are actually having in, um, um, in addition to the conventional crowdfunding platforms, let's say, is the fact that we're going to actually be addressing the most uh, common drawbacks into the, into the uh, crowdfunding industry. Because from the, so basically the crowdfunding consists in two main verticals. So there is one vertical which is uh, the investor's perspective, which has some, some money put aside and just wants to put, a, uh, put his money into a cool new idea and to try to actually maybe at some point gain revenue or uh, just get a product in advance, which is going to be something that has been looking for just something cool. Uh, and the other vertical, which is from the entrepreneur's perspective, which uh, is responsible to actually make good use of the capital to make that idea into a uh, reality. Uh, and this is this is what it all consists of. So from the investor's perspective, all you know is that you're actually going to put your money into a funding portal. Uh, if the campaign is going to be successful, so they have reached their goal uh, for the for the campaign, so the pledge goal, then it's going to uh, the entrepreneur is going to receive the capital which has been raised. Otherwise, it's going to get a reimbursement, and this is going to be considered a, a failure for the uh, for the fundraise. And that's it. So if the campaign goes through, uh, you know that you just put your money in, and what is going on from that point is is actually not visible. The entrepreneur is not accountable for anything. You just have no idea. And you can actually end up after a few months receiving an email saying that, hey, you know the startup which we have actually set out to do, we're out of money when you can't deliver anymore. So yeah, that's it. And that's the end of the story. And actually we want to address this one, which is the main, uh, the main focus for CDON. Um, yeah, basically we're gonna have, in order to address this issue, uh, one main, um, let's say one main solution for it, right? which is going to be consisting into the smart contract escrow model. And what this means is the fact that as an entrepreneur, I'm going to actually uh, invest into a startup. Right? So I'm going to put my money into a, into a, uh, into a uh, uh, crowdfunding campaign. Mm -hmm. And of course, because we're going to make use of the blockchain, we're going to be able to trace and um, um, locate all of those investment transactions so I can see where the money is going, at what time, how much has been raised for, for the crowdfunding campaign. And when I'm going to actually send the money to the entrepreneur, I'm going to know when and how much has been sent. And the additional benefit which we're going to have implemented for the smart contract escrow model is the fact that we're going to have a controlled startup capital infusion. But what this means is the fact that when we're going to the, um, uh, to the listing process for the startup, additional to the pitch date, we're going to have to come with your roadmap, which is going to be split into implementation stages. We're going to have to have at least three implementation stages. Each implementation stage must have a set of milestones defined and must be defined for a specific period of time. We're going to have to allocate percentage of the capital raised for each implementation stage. The first stage cannot have more than 20%, and this means that it's going to reduce the risk of fraud and, uh, and rock pooling. Because this way we're going to have those milestones set for each implementation stage. Uh, when the campaign has actually gone through and uh, the fundraise has been completed, the entrepreneur is going to get the first 20% for the startup, is going to actually work on the milestones, put it to practice, and actually start building the company. If all those milestones have been achieved and completed, of course, they're going to have to submit proof to our team in regard to those milestones and their completion. And if those have actually been successfully completed and, um, and delivered, we're going to be uh, triggering the next capital in the future for the startup for the next implementation stage. Mm -hmm. Of course, this is going to be uh, according to, uh, let's say, the best scenario, right? But usually in life, it doesn't happen always like this. And this is why we're also going to have the investors involved into some, some of the decision-making processes. Uh, and this is going to be involved when we're actually not going, not, not going to be able to deliver a specific milestone. For example, let's say that we want to build an, uh, an electric bike. So we have for the first implementation stage, uh, three milestones. The first one is to obtain a certificate for mass production. The second one is to build an MVP, right? So actually submit your, your metrics to a factory in, in China to build a product. And the third one is to actually attend a, a conference, which is going to be worldwide, so you can actually provide a demonstration for your product. Let's say you go, you go through the first milestone, you get your mass, uh, uh, mass production certificate, and then actually want to build your MVP uh, with the factory. But then the, then the pandemic has come, and they actually have no way to build it because all the factories are closed, the economy is actually put on hold, so you have no, you have no uh, other possibility to go around. So at this point, you're going to have to emerge a vote to your investors. And so, right, so this is the issue which I'm facing. So at the moment, I did go through all of all other milestones which have actually been completed. 
I'm just waiting for this one to go through, but because of the current situation, I'm going to have to move the milestone to the next implementation stage because this is something which is out of my control. Mm. And at this point, investors are going to make a decision and vote, and they're going to actually uh, put it under vote and decide otherwise. So we're going to actually move this to, to the next implementation stage or just drop it because some investors may think that why the context has changed, the pandemic has come, and now the idea is not feasible anymore. So we're actually going to be providing flexibility and, uh, and give a reimbursement for their, uh, uh, for their investments. Mm. Okay, great. Thank you for that explanation, Claudio. And it seems like you've really planned out uh, the stages and in, in helping with making sure that there's transparency for projects that are that are launching on, on Seedon and um, cool. and just discipline of actually getting done what they say they're going to get done. Um, now you mentioned you. at the beginning about the Seedon wallet, how that's already ready, and I all, I know that there's also a, a, a token currency that's involved in it as well. Um, is that specifically used for the governance of voting or is that um, you know, obligatory to use that to invest in through the projects? How does that incorporate into the Seedon platform? Yeah, so basically our native token Seedon is going to act as a medium of payment for each investment transaction. So each and every investor looking to put his money into a crowdfunding campaign is going to actually have to put in Seedon uh, for their investments. But because we're going to actually have a, a wider reach for our users, we're going to be focusing on both types of investors. So those which are acquainted to crypto and those which are just regular investors looking for a crowdfunding campaign and that's it. And they maybe are not aware of the crypto uh, industry. So what we're gonna have is going to, uh, to have sort of like two perspectives. So the first perspective is going to be for the crypto investors which they're going to actually deposit their tokens into the wallet or just swap uh, BNB or USDT for our token or just buy it with, with, the, um, uh, with fiat money. And they're gonna have a balance of Sion they can browse the campaigns and invest their um, their tokens into the project, or just have it for uh, the regular investor investors which are going to be coming on Sidon. They're going to be finding a project which they like, and they're going to say, "All right, so I just want to put in my, my debit card. I just want to invest my money into this project." What we're going to do uh, behind the scenes is actually take that fiat money from the debit card, convert it to Sion, and then send it to the escrow account into the blockchain. So from the user's perspective. It's just a simple investment using fiat money, but actually behind the scenes is going to be relying on our token uh, for all investment transactions. Also, because we're going to be doing this, we're going to have a trace for, for each uh, transaction because we're going to have a wallet set up for each um, crowdfunding campaign. So you can see what type of uh, investment is going into the wallet, what is going out, and so on. So you can actually have a traceability for all those um, transactions. This is why we also have chosen to build our token on, on Binance Smart Chain because of the lower gas fees, because we're going to have all these back and forth transactions. So we're actually in need for a blockchain which has low, uh, low gas fees. Mm -hmm. mm. Great to know, and especially about uh, you know, being able to include people with, with fiat and, and use the bridge over to be able to purchase the Sion tokens. And now, is that um, why the cryptocurrency exchange uh, as you mentioned there at the beginning about you know, getting ex uh, a regulated exchange, is that Part of that process in, in exchanging the Sion tokens, or are you actually building out more than that with the exchange? Yeah, basically, its purpose is going to be in order to be able to exchange uh, Sion for fiat money and, and vice versa, and also going to have it for the launchpad. Because in the launchpad, actually, what we're looking to have is to try to uh, build an ecosystem for crypto projects, which is going to be taking them from uh, the white paper stage to listing. Because at the moment, what we have, we have some some partnerships which we are not going to announce yet. But we do have some partnerships with a few exchanges and a few uh, market making solutions which they're going to be taking uh, those projects into the um, ecosystem. But uh, of course, they're going to have a, um, uh, a discount for, for the services. And yeah, what we want to have is just take the project from, from, the white papers, uh, uh, from the white paper position and just take it to the listing, like go through all the, the ICO stage, which they're actually going to be able to sell their tokens either via fiat money or just have users deposit their crypto and in order to be able to participate in the ICO. And then they're also going to be able to have the vesting into uh, our platform for their users. And also going to have staking and at the end actually go, go ahead and uh, list their token to a public exchange. Mm -hmm. So basically uh, the use for the student finance is going to provide the users the possibility to buy crypto with fiat money in, uh, in the ICO stage. So basically for the launch plan. But we're also going to be, to be making use of the same company, which is going to have the same license and exchange, just to make use of the Sidon uh, Venture Platform for the crowdfunding campaign, 
in order to have the uh, the conversion as mentioned before for the uh, for the investors. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And there are more than a few you know launch pads popping up in in all different ecosystems as well. Uh, what do you think will yeah. be a competitive advantage that Cedon will have, um, w whether it be you know those connections to the exchanges and market makers or something else uh, that will make it one of the go-to locations for uh, a launch pad for new projects? Yeah, so basically what we're going to have in regard to the launch pad perspective, uh, we're going to have this one with the uh, possibility to buy uh, crypto with fiat because I actually didn't see quite many uh, launch pads which offer this. And I think it's quite a good addition in, in this regard uh, because what I saw in the beginning and also what we did when we were an ICO, we just had other um, other investors uh, send to us crypto. Basically, we had our ICO for BNB, and they actually put it into exchange our our Cion token. But I would actually have gone with the uh, with a debit card payment because that's also a good possibility. Uh, of course, in regard to other launch pads, as mentioned before, I just want to have this sort of like inform informative um, source for the crypto industry, which is the events and the news, because I think it's quite a a, a nice addition for the launch pad, mm -hmm. and also. Uh, we're also gonna, gonna look into partnership with exchanges and the market makers, market making solutions as mentioned before, just to be able to facilitate a, a slower, um, a easier uh, launch in the, in the market. Okay, great, Claudio. And you mentioned August, uh, tentatively, you know, development is a lot, um, and yeah. it always depends on the market conditions as well, but uh, what do you and your team have to get done to get the, uh, the main platform ready for that timeline launch uh, to make sure you launch in time? Uh, yeah, so basically what we're gonna have to get done is actually the, the solution, of course, the software solution, which is uh, which is ongoing at the moment, and also the um, the license to be a funding portal in the US. Mm -hmm. uh, in regard to the uh, software development, we are in a very good shape. Uh, that is because we had a sort of like a uh, unplanned launch for Sudan Finance, which actually has has pushed us forward to uh, to build on a, on a higher pace the wallet and the transfers and so on. So basically, we have the core functionality for the platform already in place and already built. Uh, because we're going to get licensed as a crypto exchange quite soon, we're also going to be implementing the uh, the payment with fiat money, so using debit card. We're also going to have that ready, I think, about the end of June. So we're quite in a good shape. What is holding us back at the moment is just uh, the licensing as a funding port in the US. So we're just waiting for that to go through. Mm -hmm. And then they actually be able to start looking for the first uh, crowdfunding campaigns. We actually are going to uh, to release in about uh, a few days our new website, which is going to include a form which uh, entrepreneurs actually can go on and, and submit their projects into the platform. So you can actually go over their pitch deck, start the selections, and have the first crowdfunding campaigns ready for uh, going live in, live in August. Great. And you were talking about staking as well. Is that staking live right now? Yes. Yeah, we offer staking for our for our investors, uh, and as mentioned before, I'm just waiting for, uh, to release a new version, which is going to have the new additions. And we're going to have a stable version. We're going to we're going to be looking for other projects to come on our solution. And actually, offer staking for their uh, for their investors. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. And what's the best way for the viewers to learn more about the wallet and the staking, and then follow along for the updates uh, for when the the main platform is launched? They can basically go on our website because over there we have a link to uh, to Sidon Finance as well. So it's sidon.io. Uh, we also have a, a Telegram group in which we actually uh, quite actively answer our investors' uh, answers, uh, sorry, answer their questions and provide information in regard to our uh, our progress and updates. We also have into the Sidon Finance a section for release notes. And every time we have a release, we announce the release into the Telegram channel. But we also have all of the changes which have been included into the solution on the website. So actually, people can see what we have added uh, new, so how they can also use it and uh, and uh, make great use of the of the solution as it could be. Okay, sounds great, Claudio. Thank you so much for the information. I'll leave the seedon.io links for the platform and socials as well in the description box below. Uh, all the best with the upcoming uh, main launch, and let's follow up in the near future. Great, sounds great. Thank you very much.